Hey everyone, it's Tiffany from Let's Get Scrappy and we are doing the Country Craft Creations 2023 going into 2024 New Year's Eve crop. So this is my project. Usually <laughs> we have smaller projects for this because there's a lot of us designers that um, participate and I'm sorry, mine's big and it's the biggest I've ever done. I don't know why I did such a big, big project for this. <laughs> so hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, but it is an eight by eight and a half by 10 album with a three and a half inch spine. I always told myself I'm never going to do that big of a book. And this sucker is gigantor. And I used, um, this is just what you have in your stash. I used um, Day in the Life because I did have this from um, a subscription kit still. So I wanted to use this because this is a card organizer album. So you can do, there's six pages, go by month, put your cards in like each birthday each month you write it in there and then you put the cards inside and then when the birthday time comes you're ready to go so that's what I did using this paper and if you don't have this that's fine you can use there's several calendar type papers out there country craft creations has um, remember the time collection which I might I have I have some scraps left so this is scraps but i have enough i think to do another one of these so i might do that in this collection but i might have to change a couple things up so we'll see if i get to that and i did mat everything in just a 65 pound white um, cardstock and that is throughout and i use black artisan you know for the base so again, use what you have in your stash. And I know um, like Echo Park is coming out with another one for this year. And it the format is exactly the same. So I don't know if Country Craft Creations is going to get it. But if they do and you don't have this, you can pick that up. But like I said, there's several things. And it doesn't even have to be calendar, monthly. It could just be a pretty album. It could be a baby album. Um, Christmas whatever so you guys will see once we get into it but let's just get into this just real quick so I use one of the four by four cut aparts on the cover you'll see because in the kit I used one full collection kit and I think four of the day in the life to the September one I think that has like the grid paper on the back I use four of those you don't have to and I'm going to give you a substitute um, but I used the leftover strips. These are all scraps from the cutoffs because you only get one page per month in this collection. So I just did the strips. I want to say these are like one and a half inches um, and matted it again. And then I used a full pack of the colored cardstock that matches this collection. And I for sure used a full pack of Artisan plus maybe, I don't know maybe like five or six. So um, we have a double closure here because why not? The thing's gigantic. I've never done a double closure and it was fun. <laughs> we have a large belly band here so you can, you know, put a card in. I do have a stopper down here. This is a double belly band. So you have that too and I just use scraps. So this is the grid paper that I'm talking about. So you can see you don't have to have that. That's just what I used as excess. It could just it could have just been the white. It could have been the black. And then I just used the scraps in the um, oops the sticker sheet here. And so every page is the same. So today we're gonna make the album. You know the outside. I'm gonna show you how to make one of the pages. But all the pages are the same. So we don't need to make all six together um, you just need the tutorial on how to do one we'll stick it in and then we have a large pocket in the back that we'll talk about as well and I just bent that just now so um, these are accordion pockets and 
it does flip up and this is intended where you can write like the birthdays but you also can use notebook paper it could just be plain white don't have to do that and I do have magnets through here and I want to say I used a full maybe a pack and a half of the basic gray magnets but it is an accordion can you guys see accordion pocket and this is another pocket up here but it does stop right here so you can only do four and a quarter by five and a half so a two size up here and at the end um, of the walkthrough I'll show you real quick stuff some card in, cards in there and then we'll get going on the tutorial. So these are literally just all the same. All the same, all the way throughout. And we have a half inch gusset. If you want your book a little bit bigger, you can add more in between your pages. Um, but yeah, that is, I mean, this is it, nice and simple. And then on the back, we have um, a gusseted pocket so we have this large flap here I just have a piece of foam board in here to maintain the shape but just so you guys can see it is a quarter inch depth all the way around for the pocket and you can put excess cards in there um, this was just scraps you know one of those strips I had left and then I did have some of the cut aparts how I strategically cut that sheet and I will walk you guys through that too but this is just in you know when you have all the pages exactly the same, it's just like assembly line. So it does go really fast. Um, it comes together really fast, I should say. So um, you could see here the solids I have just going throughout. I try to kind of show one of each color. Well, I didn't try, I did. One of each color through, and I just kind of mix and mashed how I liked it. And then I did the same thing on the back, um, except I did mess up one of these was supposed to be yellow I think maybe this one and I put the wrong color down so that's you know <laughs> I had it laid out where it was one color each and then these flags I just used from some of the cutoffs you know why not but that's it that's it and oh and there's a large pocket here so you can put things in here too um, I have not put anything in there I would say I'm gonna show you guys I I don't know that I would keep the pocket on the back because once you do put cards in here, this gets really full and chunky and we're gonna do that right now just so you guys can see. So I just grabbed some cards from my stash and you know, you can put them in this way. I just wanna show you guys like what it looks like. And you guys know my cards are thick. <laughs> I have all kinds of embellishing on my cards. So, you know, we'll just put a little Valentine's one in there. And then a birthday one here. This is one of my all time faves that I copied from something. Love that one. Let's do a graduation. And then you can have some flat cards in. So just to kind of show you guys you know, how thick this can get once you start putting cards in. So can you see that already? So I don't know that you would actually want to have this pocket on there. It's an option. And again, if you make this like a baby album or something, you know, because there is one page for every month, you can keep the pocket. But if you're making it for the cards, I would suggest maybe not doing it. But Let's go ahead and get started because we have a lot to go over in a short amount of time. So what you will need to get started, so we're first going to start with the cover. You are going to need two pieces of chipboard that is eight and a half by 10. So two pieces of chipboard, I have one covered already. And then one piece that is three and a half by 10 for the spine. Is that three and a half? Maybe it's three. Let's check. Do I feel like that? Nope, that's three and a half. Okay, it just looked weird. And then to cover that, um, so to cover the spine, we have a piece that is six and a half by 12. And then two pieces that are um, 10 and a half by 12 to get the cover going. 
and then I'll show you the hinge and then once we get this done I'll give you the measurements for the paper so um, we need for the hinge a little bit less than 10 by 12 and then here's all the score marks so it's literally just at one and three quarters you start and just go halves all the way to the end so that should be it okay now let's get going on the cover I do have some um, score tape on the back of mine already just to kind of speed up the process a little bit and I have one of them done so hard to see I feel like this table is so low Hope you guys had a nice holiday time and it's now time for a new start of the year, which is always good. So you can come in and do all your different measuring. I usually will do on my scoreboard just one inch as a guide, but we're just gonna stick this little baby down and somewhat center it. And give it a good burnish. Okay, and then just get our score tape in my end frame. I have the camera. This thing's this thing's big. <laughs> so it is definitely gonna be interesting to put it together. Make sure I'm recording too. Yes, I am. Because I'm just saying, this is a big baby. Big baby. You can use your wet glue as always. We're going to do um, Tamara's lay flat method for the cover. Except for on this one, I did my spine the old school way. Um, I just, you know, I mix it up every once in a while. But you can do it however you want. I think I wrote down both measurements. So I will give you the measurements if you like to do the floating spine. That's what I call the floating, um, not spine, floating hinge. Even though it's not like floating. <laughs> it's just stuck to it. Versus having the, I don't even know how to explain it. Yeah, the hinge doesn't actually have the wings in Tamara's lay flat method. So I guess we're gonna say we're doing a hybrid. Oops, that did not go very well. And I'm just gonna come in, miter your corners however you like to. I just eyeball mine and go at it. So this is, um, as you guys, I'm assuming, I don't know when my video will be during the event, but um, it is just use your own stash and that way you can, you know, use whatever paper you like, whatever you have to um, you know, smash your stash. All these projects can be used with any collection. So squish it down, fold it over. Ugh. Probably should get my other mat because I don't want it's glue on my table. Okay. Can't remember if I burnished that down or not. So I'll give it another burnish. Burnishing with covers is very important. You want everything to be stuck really good. Let's see, 
you know what I'm doing. I'm gonna get out my little, my other mat. There we go. And this mat is dirty because my niece does use this one. But I haven't cleaned it. Fold that in. Fold in these corners. Okay. And you always want to give it a good fold before just to kind of work those fibers. I could already tell my cuts are a little, a little cray cray. And that's okay. We'll just take a little bit more off. And remember, if you mess up here and take off too much, you can either um, glue the corner that you did take off. You can glue it back down. So, you know, like take it like that and glue it. Or you could just take a little Sharpie if your paper's black. I've even done the white gel pens before if my board was white or my paper was white. So, did I take that off? Ooh. Goodness gracious, Tiffany, come on. Definitely gonna have to burnish this one. Close up that little side. And burnish. This is going to be a fun crop. I've seen so many fun projects from the other designers. Hopefully you guys like it and have fun. And okay, and fold that over. Okay, clean that up a little bit. So we have two of these magically done. So now it's time to do the spine. And I'm just going to do the same thing where I just kind of eyeball it and put it down. not stuck yet. Let's try that again. Try this side. Much better. And just kind of come in and center it. Doesn't have to be totally even. But you could use your spacers, you could use your scoreboard, if you'd like to make sure all your stuff is nice and even. Okay, so let's just come in, we're gonna get our glue. And I'm going to, let me just fold this first. Again, working those fibers before we get it all glued down. So it's just kind of going back and forth. Really works the fibers. And we will just come in. You can, there's like a thousand different ways to do this. I'm just going to come in and glue it and stick it all down and then I'll miter it a little bit. So 
getting it on there. Just getting it stuck. Just pushing in really tight so it sticks to the edge of that chipboard. okay pushing the glue out you could do it on the other side too so it doesn't matter really what side you're doing I just want to make sure I have a good stick the violin over here and then I'm just gonna put my scissors up against the chipboard and give it a little miter you can go deeper if you want to on the miter I just do a little one. And then we'll do the same thing here. Glue it down. as well. Usually I'm going kind of fast, but it is good to spend a little bit of time on your cover to make sure everything is nice and secure. Okay, so that's good. So let's just kind of match it up. See if we're good. Yep. Okay. So now let's get a little bit of score tape on there. I can definitely tell I was crooked, that's for sure. <laughs> that was not an even center. But again, it doesn't matter. All this gets covered up. So I like to, if you have not done this before, I like to come off the actual cover like an eighth of an inch. I have all, I have never liked the glue at the top. So I know some people do the glue instead of score tape. And I know people say it dries clear. Yes, it does, but I still see that clear shininess coming through the seams and I can't stand it can't stand it sometimes here like right here I got a little bit of a crack it's okay just come on in and seal it back up just like so it's magic Okay, now we will just want to get a good burnish again. Okay, and you can tell sometimes where like my glue is or things overlap is when I will get a crack or like score tape. Seems to be on the same corner very interesting so I just kind of peel it back a little more put some glue in there come in seal it back up just in case yours does that cracking is not the end of the world okay and we'll get our two pieces out this off I mean the cover might be the cover and the hinge that's gonna be like the most work of this entire project I'll just put a little 
little bead of glue on the tape at the bottom. I like to just come in and match mine up here. Like so. I feel like that's good. Might be off a smidgen, but it's okay. Burnish it really good. You don't ever want that part to lift. Okay, and then just kind of come back through, give a little press there. Now we will do the other side. We'll take that tape backing off. still in frame because for some reason lately I've been out of frame. And then grab our other piece. And again I'm just kind of lining things up with my hands on oopsie on this side here. I want to make sure my book isn't totally crazy. Sometimes I've had it and I've been just, you know, slightly off. It's still fine. The book works. It doesn't look wonky. And most people don't notice those things. We just know it's not how we wanted it exactly. But it's a handmade item. Just have fun with it. And don't get stressed if something doesn't work out exactly like we wanted it. Okay, so we have our book. Start, look at this big baby. This sucker is big. I really hope. Okay, let me check. I don't know, it was making me nervous. It looked like the spine wasn't big enough. But it is. Okay, so... Now we will do the hinge. So set this aside. Get out your piece that is a little bit less than 10 by 12. And up on the 12, you're going to start at the... Let's see. I think I did two. Yeah. I, I did this because... Mine's like off, so don't look at that. Do yours the way I tell you to do it. <laughs> Let me grab my scoreboard. So you will start just for those that like to have it totally even on both sides. So you are going to start at one and three quarters. And don't look at my paper, just imagine it's all lined up properly. But one and three quarters, then two and a quarter, two and three quarters, three and a quarter, three and three quarters, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, five and three quarters, six and a quarter, six and three quarters, seven and a quarter. Seven and three quarters, a lot of scoring. Eight and a quarter, eight and three quarters, nine and a quarter, nine and three quarters, and then ten and a quarter. Okay, so that will get you your six pages. And 
if you want it by let me grab my thing oh, have you, if you do it the other way you're gonna want a piece that is let's see here that is eight and a half by ten like a little bit less than ten and then you will on the eight and a half side score at starting at you know half inch all the way to the end so half inch all the way to eight if you want to do the floating hinge so again that piece for you if you want your hinge like that is eight and a half by a little bit less than ten and on the eight and a half side is where you will start your scoring at a half inch. Okay, so we are going to start putting our score tape down. Get on this side. So I'm just starting here, and I put score tape down. Um, in between as well. So now in the third spot, this is going to be what sticks to, you know, the the book. And then you are going to do it again. If you want to do it like mine, otherwise just do your thing. Skip one. This is sticking to the spine. I really hope I'll do this right. <laughs> this is a hinge. Skip one. So you're just going to have these doubles. Skip. Double it up. This book is big. Like, this is ridiculous how big this hinge is. <laughs> okay, skip. And then... One goes there, that will go to the spine. One more, and then you should have an empty one. And then I'm just gonna add tape to the edges here, because that's what is gonna stick down on the actual album. Okay, now we need a really good burnish on these. You can also flip at this point, if you like score tape on your hinge, you can put score tape on the hinges on the back. Okay, and I do like to come in and kind of fold before we glue things down. So folding that one, and then you skip the score, fold the next one, skip the score, hold, let me just make sure, that could be the wrong one, yep, that's the wrong one, so we don't want that, skip two scores is what you want to do, <laughs> goodness gracious. Get it together, Tiffany. So these, this would be your mountain, and then you'd have your valley, and then your mountain. Skip two. Skip two. I mean, if you're off, it's no big deal. We're just kind of, again, working the paper. So it's a little bit more flexible. So now come back to that first one over here and um, do, remember that first tape, if you're doing exactly like me, you're going to ignore that first tape. A good burnish. At least I kind of jimmied my desk so it doesn't do as much shaking as it has been doing. I have like some chipboard. I did a little MacGyver action. 
And I, my, my spines are always, my hinges, I should say, are always crooked. So, ideally this is flat, which this is pretty good. But once we get in here, I don't know what it is. I still struggle. So we're on to the next one. And again, good burnish. And down you go. Okay, and then the next one. So you should have a mountain and then a valley. And I just flip mine and push it down till it hits. And then just kind of, again, just work them back and forth. Ugh. To really loosen up those fibers. And it doesn't hurt to have another burnish in there. And yes, I like saying burnish. That is literally what my friend, she made a little banner in my craft room and it says burnish because I say it all the time. <laughs> I don't know why I have to say it and I don't know why I have to say it like that. And maybe it was just a way to remind me to do it when I first was learning how. Who knows? Not that you guys want to hear all this stuff. You're like, Tiffany, just hurry up and get this done. Let's get it done. Yep, gone are the days where my husband and I want to go out to clubs on New Year's and have to spend three times the amount that you would have spent on a normal day of the week at that same place. <laughs> for a glass of champagne that we don't drink. We're good. And we're almost done. Like I said, I'm gonna show you guys how to do one of the pages. We're not doing all six together because it's exactly the same. And I will give you measurements for the decor paper that I used, but we won't be um, doing that part together. This is just a tutorial for the actual base of the album, but I'll give you guys the measurements. And as always, if you have questions on anything, you can put it in the comments in this video or on the Facebook group, and I will always answer any question if I can. Okay, I'm gonna come in and just miter my corners now. Doesn't have to be a lot. I just do it lightly, so just a little slant. Some people don't do it at all. We did do ours a little bit less than 10, so, um, you know, you, Um, should be fine if you don't want to miter your corners. Some people don't. Because it does take away like a little bit of space. That's why my miter is just very slight to adhere to the actual page and make sure that it's nice and secure. Even though I've never had anything happen with an album ever as far as it like falling apart. But I also live in Washington state, so I I know I've heard of it being a little bit different in, you know, states that have just extreme weather. <laughs> we don't have that here. Okay, now let's get out. I'm going to give you guys the measurements for our, well, let's put this on first, for our um, page. Do a dry fit first and I'm just kind of looking so this is the center here 
I'm literally just eyeballing mine, but you can mark yours if you want to. And sometimes it's nice if you have a mat that is a grid to just use that mat. So I know that we are three and a half. So I'm just centering it in there. And then I will know that this line is my middle. So I could just come in and kind of get that one centered on there. So let's just do that now. And I'm gonna do the inside first and then I'll do my two outsides with some glue. I like to give myself time to set up on the actual spine before the glue, you know, dries up. Thank you. I'm going to put some in here. Now let's center it. Again, I'm just using that black line as my center and it won't be perfect in that I know so I'm okay with that this your girl can't even see over here I don't even know what I'm doing right now it's good enough sometimes I have crooked pages it's slight it's all good I do not throw away my bases, if I mess up, I just make it work somehow. So again, I'm just coming in with your hinges. You want to have a really good, um, you know, you want to have a good stick. So this is really where you got to spend the time. Come in and burnish, especially on those floating hinges. You don't want it to ever lift which I've never had a problem. I just, for this one, it might get, you know, a little heavy just with the cards. I'm hoping that I am actually on this, I can't see nothing. <laughs> Where this lighting is, I can't see anything. Okay, so I'm just gonna lift this up, come in here. I'm gonna make sure I have glue right here for sure. I do not want that to bubble up at all. No bubble bubble. Bubble bubble, bubble bubble bubble. Okay, get it on there, seep it out. That is okay, because then you know you have a good stick. Push it in, push that glue in. Make sure you are stuck all over. Oops, don't lift it like I just did. I don't like bubbles at all. I hate it when the glue dries and I can hear the little snap, crackle, pop. Don't like it. Okay, so I think that is on there, good. And let's come in and just kind of work that fold over as much as we can. Do, 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 just gently. Okay. Now let's do this side. And again, remember, if you get cracking, it's okay. You can come in after everything is said and done and just kind of button it up with a little bit of glue in there. Because I know for the most part, like Artisan does not crack. I get it though every once in a while. So I think it does depend like when things overlap like that. So sometimes it's just operator here. Get 
that down. I guess I didn't need to come out that far with glue. <laughs> but it'll all be covered up. See, I'm the messy crafter. Push it all in. Get it in. Get it in there. Just giving it a good varnish, letting that glue set up. And then we're going to come in on that fold lightly. Don't press too hard and just slowly work it. Still having that cracking on that spine part, but it's okay. I will fix it later. And can't go all the way down right now because my hinge is in the way. But we have a good fold here, like so. Okay, let me just come in and give this a little little boop boop surgery time stitches <laughs> I do feel like I'm on the operating table sometimes with some of my projects okay there we go now let's just quickly do the belly band on this side so for the large belly band it is three and three quarters by nine and a half and then we score a half inch on each side so that should be fairly easy I'm just gonna miter these corners and then the second belly band is one and three quarters and a little bit less than nine and a half for both because you don't want it to impede on your um, your like gusset right there on the spine. And miter these corners because you're going to score a half inch on each side. So I'll just show you because I'm not sure if there's some people that don't speak English and do it all from a visual. So. Where's my scoreboard? I know it has to be right in my face. Yep, right there. Just blending in. So again, it will be, I don't have like a ton of room with this big book. So half inch, and I do turn it and do a half inch, and then half inch, turn it, and do a half inch so nice and easy for the double belly band the double belly band wish I could see hope this video is always isn't too long okay so fold on the crease give it a nice crispy burnish need a nice crease and I'm going to stick these together but I want to do a dry fit first voila we're gonna eyeball that as if I have good eyeballs I still can't wear those five hundred six hundred dollar glasses I got those things drive me crazy I think I tried to put them on like twice I don't know what they're supposed to do because it wasn't helping me see that's for sure so just come in and eyeball the center or you can mark it it's upside down I don't like that okay and then you're gonna come in here and dry fit again so just make sure that you still can open this up. So I'm just going to turn this because I do. Do like that. Okay. I think we are good. 
you just don't want it to go over that um, kind of little gusset little space that we have and I'm just doing a little bit of glue again just to make sure so if I do give this to anyone that is not in Washington I don't want it to fall apart on them with square tape Furnish it down. Good burnish. Voila. Now, I did go in and just slide my paper in. Um, so, just make sure I would do these first and then your paper is smaller. No matter if you double mat like me or just do the one mat. Just slide it in. I don't put glue on it all over the place. I um, slide it in either without glue at the bottom and just at the top and then I'll lift up down here and just put a little bit of glue and close it up. I don't like all that messy, the messy glue stuff everywhere. Okay. So for, let's do the back pocket. So for that, we need, so I'm going to cast a shadow probably. Where are you? Okay, so we have our pocket. I think that is it. Yep. Okay, so for the bottom part of the pocket, it is five and a half by nine and seven eighths because again, I'm making this a little bit smaller than eight and a half. And then we're gonna score on three sides, um, one at a half and then three and three and quarters. So I'll show you real quick. Let me just shift this over here. Okay, so with your nine and seven eighths across the top, you are going to come in a score at a half inch, three and three quarters. Then you're gonna turn, half inch, three quarters, not three and three quarters, three quarters, sorry about that. <laughs> half inch and three quarters of an inch. And that's gonna give us our gusseted pocket. Then we have our next piece that is with, um, it's gonna be eight by eight and three eighths. And then with the eight across, oops, across the top here, we're gonna do the same thing, half inch and three quarters of an inch. And that is gonna give us our pocket. I think I said I would show you guys everything we need, so let's just do that real quick. So the next for the base page is eight by 11, and on the 11 side, you're just gonna score a half inch on each side. Then this piece, and you need six of these. Then you'll need six of these for eight that are eight by 10, and we're just gonna glue these two together. So you need six of each of those. And then, you will need 12 of these because one goes on every single page. This is the bottom pocket and it is four and three quarters by 11. And we will go through the scoring on this one, but it is an accordion pocket. So you score at a half inch, one, and then one and a half, and then nine and a half, 10, and 10 and a half. I opted not to do the middle score because I tend to fold it better, but I'm gonna show you guys both ways. And then half inch on this side. So we'll go through that together. And then the top pocket is 12 of these as well, because one for every page. Like you guys, seriously, just get this all cut and then assembly line it, it's really easy. Um, 12, four by nine, 
and then a half inch all the way around those three sides. And then our bottom flaps, you'll need 12 of these. These are four and three quarters by six and a quarter. And then you will score a half inch here. And that is if you want a four by six little photo spot or four by six spot to write down, you know, a list of birthdays. You don't have to have that. Okay, so back to the pocket. Now, um, this one, let's miter just at that first score mark. Miter the corners for that. And then we will come in and we're gonna fold boo boo and fold again. Just kind of work it, work it, work it. So that is going to be our top flap and I did round the corners, at least I think I did, if I remember correctly. So round the corners and then this is the bottom and miter the top at that first score. So. Just right there at that first one. And then down here, we're gonna cut out this straight, but go up just a little bit in on, on the other side of that score line. And I'm going to angle this one here, but you wanna take this out. I'm trying to think the best way to do it. And it doesn't really matter where this little flap, um, if you want to go, I'll show you guys. So you have like a little um, area like that. Are my lights on? Yes. Just seems, try to get that in there a little bit more. So you can, you know, have your, little flap connected that one or this one it really does not matter so I'm just gonna connect it to there so cut in and just kind of I like to miter these just a little bit like so come in and cut down So you guys can see my little miter. And I mean, whatever you do, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you dry fit. That's all you gotta do. And little wedgie, little wedgie. That's not a must, you don't have to Give your paper a wedgie. <laughs> Not sure why I'm saying that. And then, look at all the glue all over my fingers. Looks like I'm peeling away. So, just for me, tip tip, when you have like the smaller gussets, I like to fold on the last one first it just seems to work better for me I don't know if that is real or just in my head but I feel like it works better then I come in and do like my work my way up to the top just kind of get it into place like so you can fold your little flappy do down just kind of double check some of your cuts. Make sure you don't have a lot of excess though. That's what you don't want. Boop. And boop, boop. Okay. And then we are gonna put this baby together. So, 
first, just kind of get it all, you know, where it folds up on each other. Like so. I do mine like this. You can do yours like this, whichever way. But I do like to not have the, you know, if this is on the inside, then it doesn't necessarily catch as much on that when you're putting things in there. But you do want to make sure you have a nice squared up pocket. So if I put that together, does that look squared? Then this one, is that going to be squared? That's just all we're doing right now. I think it's good. Just take this off. Okay. So we will do this first. And you can, um, i trying to think, you could put this down first, the, this bottom one first if you want to. You can do that and get it fit. Like I said, just come in and dry fit. We're going to put all the way out to this edge. So it'll be a little bit shorter, but that gives us enough breathing room. So you can do that and I'll show you in just a sec because we're going to do it. might be easier for some peeps put a little bit of wet glue on there to give a second for it to set up and just come in make sure my frame yes I am I'm coming all the way over I can't see and I'm okay if I'm not down to the bottom all the way I just don't want to be below Okay. See how we have that on there? Now, it'll be easier to fold this up. Just gonna get that in there. And again, just dry fit it before you stick it all down. So you're just looking. Looking, looking, looking. Do we look good? Yes, we look good. Oh, I thought that was the thing sticking out. So, just like that. Now, you can come in. And you can make yourself like a little, like, shim if you want to. I'll just, I'll use the, you don't have to do this at all. But just if you, you know want to have a guide to keep your shape when you're doing these kind of box pockets. You could glue chipboard together and get the, the consistency that you want. So I know I need to push it down. Good. So this gives me a little bit of oops, wiggle room if I don't take it with me. Now I'm stuck. What did I just do? Don't do that, people. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm always good to show you what not to do. So I'm just making sure I got a good box pocket. I should probably give it my ruler is usually better. And turning it. Goodness gracious, Tiffany. So just come in. You can use your spacers. Work great for this. Don't break them though, but they do. I'm just kind of putting some pressure down below. Now that is stuck good. Okay. So just make sure before everything is totally done. Just a little bit down there. Okay, now we're going to put this on. I got a lot of stuff everywhere. Trying to hurry this up before my back starts to hurt because the table's really low. <laughs> 
Okay, take this off. When I do this, I kind of put the bottom down first to use it as a guide to make sure that I match up. So, I have this folded down and I come down here and I match this up before I stick anything up there. So I can see, kinda, sorta, not a really. Okay, that's where I need to be over there. I really can't see above this camera. Okay. I think it is what it is. Boop. I'm doing good. You guys have to let me know. One, if you have Instagram and you make this, please tag me. Would love to see. But also, if you're going to decide to use this style for another type of occasion would love to see so I just kind of creased back so I had a nice crisp edge you guys see this thing's so big and massive it's hard to get it all in there oh see that's what I, I don't like I don't like seeing the glue I went up a little too high there and I don't like it don't like it, it looks messy to me Okay, so now we're going to do the page, which is really easy, and you're just going to do this six times. So take this piece, we're going to miter the corners. Let's just miter all the corners so I can put my scissors away and not have these little triangles everywhere. Come in and matter all the corners. I'm telling y'all, this is such an easy project. It's big, and it doesn't have to be this big. You can make it whatever size you want. But anytime you could just repeat the same page, oh my gosh, it's so much easier. You guys are going to have to tell me if the camera is better and not doing as much shaking. I'm sure there's some shaking, but I really did my little MacGyver action. I'm just coming in on this one. You are going to just come all the way through to that score line right there, miter. Do the same thing for this one. You're gonna go up and make sure you're to the left of the bump of the score mark, miter. You're gonna do that again, if I can. And I'm still gonna come back once we get this folded. I like to miter, anytime I do a accordion, I miter it. But I do it after I do the actual fold for the accordion. Come in here. Okay, got to pick up my little mess. A little mess is happening. Okay, so let's start with the pocket page first. So these two pieces, fold this over. What do we say? That's what we should do. Like you guys really should be having a drink, even if it's non-alcoholic, every time I say burnish. <laughs> burnish. Okay, now we're gonna just stick these together. And I just come in and I just hold them together. I feel like I have more control when I do it like this. 
And remember to dry fit first because our scoreboards and our trimmers are all different. So, you know, even though we're thinking this might be, you know, 10 inches, it usually is like a hair off because of it being scored. So sometimes you have a little bit of excess on your cut, which, see, I do. Because when you go to cut it, it's either the correct measurement, 10, or it's slightly off. One or the other is always slightly off. But I feel like it's the scoring because you score it and then you fold and that eats up a little bit extra paper than it should. But either way, you're just going to come in, trim off that little bit of excess. Be careful not to cut into the fold. Lock style. There we go. We have that. Now let's start with our corner. I'm going to show you guys the two ways. So this is how I like to do it with, can you guys see any measurement? Okay, see, I don't have the middle score line. We are going to fold and fold. Because for some reason, when I do all the scores on a coin, I cannot get them. I don't like to have any like excess hanging over. So I found that this is easier, but I'm going to give you guys two different ways. You decide what you like. So I kind of just bend, get the paper like started, and then I match up my corners where I want it the best I can. It doesn't always work on tutorial day. Darn it. Okay, so I'm just working the paper, telling it where to go, and I find it's easier to do it without a score line in there. And then I don't have any excess if I have done it correctly. So same thing here, fold it over. And if you do, because like on that first book, my first few, there is a little bit of hangover and it is what it is. So again, just coming in, just kind of bending in the center, but not creasing it yet because I, I want to match up my corners. So I don't see the accordion. So that is just a tip tip that works best for me, might not work best for everybody. And then I come in and I miter. You don't have to do this. I especially do it on this one because I don't like all that bulk when we go and fold everything up. So you could take off a little bit more if you want to. This one, you know, the top one, you really don't have to do. I don't know why I do it, but I do. And once you kind of get in there, you might see and think, oh, I still need to take a little bit more off to have a good fold. That's fine. That's fine. You do you, boo. Okay, so now you can, you know, we're going to put that down first. I'm just checking just to make sure everything is good. Yep. Okay, so we have our page. So we're going to put this one down. Add a little glue. I can get that chunky part off. If I went too high, it's going to seep out. I don't like it. <laughs> I really don't like that. Okay. And then just again, coming in, and I am just matching them up best I can, but I would always recommend to dry fit first, because if your score marks are off, and this, like say this um, accordion pocket is a little bit wider than your regular page, it's fine, but just bump it a little bit off so it doesn't hit, you know, your hinge when you go to put it in. So 
So see, we have that. Normally I would put like a piece of tape down just because so things don't hit on it. Even though this is a long tutorial, it's really easy. You could just have a show on and just put it together. I want to make sure it's all on there right. Nothing hanging off. And you don't have to have an accordion pocket either. So remember that. You could have just a regular pocket if you know how to do albums and that's what you want to do. You can do that. Then I'm going to take our middle pocket. Oh, and I put score tape down. I didn't want to. <laughs> so how I would normally be doing it and I just might hold on let me just take it off don't want it on this one I just by habit doing regular pockets stuck it on there so hold please while I take it off I'm going to show you guys why you can do it like a regular pocket if you want to um, I, just, I like this because it helps me guide the pockets when I'm putting them in. Ignore my little boo-boo. Nobody's going to know. Well, all of you will know. But <laughs> nobody else. Okay, so just fold here and here. That's all we're doing. Like I said, you can fold that one if you want to and... Put it in I use this as my guide and I put just my score tape should have been on the other side but I put glue on it we're just gonna tuck that in that other pocket until it meets tuck 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 come in and just do make sure your glue does not go above that score mark because then your A2 size cards will not fit. And we are just tucking that in there. Make sure you're inside the first accordion part. I can't see anything. So I'm just hoping <laughs> it's in there. I don't know. Come in. Burnish. We have that. This is this is it, you guys. This is it. And then I'm going to do that. This is literally all we are doing for the whole entire book. Ooh, ooh, battery starting to go low, I hope. I really hope that didn't ruin the thing. Oh my gosh. That's when I know I've been on long because my battery is starting to go and it was full. So again, I'm just eyeballing a center. Putting it down. And then you would do the same thing on the back. And I don't know. Okay. I hope I have time. If it runs out, there's just going to be another video. So that's it. You know. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys with the other score mark. I don't like it like this, but I'm going to show it to you. And if I do it correctly, I'm not putting it on. <laughs> okay. So folding in. Folding out and then folding in so in theory they should all match up but they never do oh okay well that one's good okay let's do this one 
Watch. It's now gonna like work. This one. And if you guys have some other, you know, helpful hints, feel free. Drop it in the comments of what how you do your accordions. This glue is everywhere, just peeling away. Okay, well, that one was good too, so yeah. <laughs> that was not any help, but I promise you, they don't all line up. Sometimes it could just be how it folds once you burnish it. I don't know. That was rude. It just did a little trickster moment. Okay. I'm really nervous it is going to run out, so I'm just going to ignore that tape for now and make sure it folds in. Oh no, this isn't that one. Okay, let's get this one on there first. Get a little bit of glue. Guess I got a little fuzzy on there. Yes, that'll bug me. Okay, and then just make sure you're doing it on the right side. So you have your other accordion here. You're gonna come in and do the same thing. Hold in the accordion, grab your page, Line it up. There we go. It's that easy. Line it up. Okay, now, other side. Really, battery just stayed just a little longer. Now I'm stuck. A little bit, not too much, and then we're just gonna come in and stick this down again. Make sure it's not sticking in crazy spots, kind of just come under, burnish under. We have our little pocket. Again, ignore my score tape on the bottom. I'm just gonna add glue and keep going because I really do not want my phone to run out and I don't have my charger over here. That was silly. Silly, silly, silly. So now tuck and eyeball the line so I can see I need to go to, and this will get covered by paper anyway, so it's not a huge, because you can cover it with your decorative paper. I just need this one to go in. There we go. Okay, so we have that. Then we need our little flappity flap down here. Get a good burnish. A little. I mean, we are basically done. This is it. I did one eighth of an inch shorter so for my matting and then another one eighth inch shorter for my decorative paper and that goes on like that I did stick my magnets right here and then this is just a large pocket and it's just going to go in our book. So let's just put it in our book right now. I'm going to just put some glue. And I don't go all the way down to the bottom on mine, especially with these accordion pockets. I would leave an eighth of an inch for sure at the bottom. I don't even know if that's going to stick very well because that is not a lot of glue. But we're going to try it. So dry fit first before you do this, always. Tiffany's just going for it. And I want an eighth of an inch. So put your pages in before you do your pocket. Because right now I know that my pocket is behind there so I can't push really hard down the large gusseted pocket. I did it last on my other album. 
but I do like to do usually score tape and then glue just to make sure it gets a good stick. That's not sticking. Oh. Yeah, because that didn't go in there. <laughs> oh my gosh. That wasn't even on there. That was silly. She's got issues, people. Because now I'm trying to be fast and it's not going to work. So then it just makes it even longer. I don't even know, how did I get half in, half out? Okay, we're trying this again, just making sure. I mean, at least it didn't stick, that's a good thing. Okay, am I now sticking, I hope? Okay. So... I have this in, and if I do it in the other collection, I will show you guys that for sure. But that's it. This is the book, like so. And I want to show you guys. So, if you do get this collection, I cut all the way through first. Then I cut out just right here. My month, I left these two so I have something if I want to craft with this later. I cut here out. I left one 4x4. Four four. And then on this strip, depending upon which one I like better, I left one of the 3x4s. So my sheet ended up looking like this is what my cuts looked like. Just so you guys can see. This strip went in the top pocket. This strip I used on the front cover. This one went down on the bottom flap down here. And all of these are, so I went, this is seven and three quarters, all right here. This is the month, just so you guys can see. I know it's in pencil, but I didn't use any of this here. And then this was a little strip I used for the flags. So just in case you get the same collection, you'll know where to cut. But this piece was here, this piece up there, and of course on the matting. So seven and three quarters, and you just need enough to cover, to go down into the pocket. You don't have to do a full piece, so definitely save your papers. And then for the solids, if you get the solids, I used three of the solids for inside the pocket. And this is how I cut it. So I cut at seven and three quarters here. And then I cut four and four. And then a four, it ends up being four and a quarter, but it doesn't matter because it goes in the pocket. Um, so you get one, two, three, four pieces out of, you know, like I said, I used three of the solids. There's six in there. And you get your 12 and then you're left with a four and a quarter by four and a quarter square that you can use for matting. I used mine on the front cover. So it's really easy, you know, just so you guys can see. Like this is the matting for here. I'll just do this. I mean, it's seriously gonna run out on us. And they, I did not, you know, this was just how I cut it so it was nice and easy and I just, like an assembly line again, just went through and cut it. My page still is not on there all the way. And then this is the top three and seven, seven eighths. So it was nice and easy. But, just like that. So, that is what the book looks like. And this side is out. We'll have to come in and tape these. But again, I will show you guys, if I do anything different down here in the next one, I will give you the measurements for that. But I really hope that you guys enjoyed um, this project and are having fun at the CCC New Year's Eve crop. Please let me know. If you do have any questions, 
I will be around crafting with you, so definitely let me know. But thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.